What a privilege to come and share the message of God's unconditional love with you. You know, the more we hear of the grace of God, the more we experience the power of God. That's what God wants for you. God wants you to experience His power that indwells you in your physical life. It is good to have the Holy Spirit in you. But what we want is we want the Spirit of God to manifest in our lives. And that's what the grace of God is all about. So many times we think that the grace of God is just about God just forgiving people, God not being angry and all of that. Now I believe that includes forgiveness. It includes mercy and all of those things. But the grace of God is that which is happening in the lives of so many people that are just experiencing the life of God. We should always know that the kingdom of God is about God's power manifesting in our lives. It's not just a confession thing. So many times we think that confession is everything. Confession is a fruit of the experience you have. It's not supposed to flow just out of your cognitive and out of your mind. It's something that's supposed to flow out of the love that you experience in your heart. God loves you. When you go through a hard time, God sees that and He's got compassion on you. Now, before we get further into the Word of God, I just want to thank everybody that is willing to send an SMS and a praise report when they feel the experience of God's grace, when they're experiencing the life of God in their lives, to the number that's on the screen. Man, it's good to hear from, from you. It's just so encouraging to see that this program is really touching people all over the world. People's lives are being changed, and I want to thank you that you've been willing to send that SMS. I also want to thank everybody that's just deposited money into the account of Dynamic Love Ministries. It's good to see that you are blessed by this to the point that you are willing to support it. God bless you for that. Now, let's get into the Word and into the definitions of grace. Now, <clears throat> we're first going to look at the Greek definition of grace. It's a Greek word, charis. Um, it says it's graciousness as gratifying, a manner or act, abstract or concrete, literal, figurative or spiritual, especially the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life, including gratitude, acceptable, benefit, favor, gift, gracious, joy, liberty, pleasure, thanks or thanks worthy. <clears throat> what stands out for me is especially the, div the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life that includes gratitude. Now, that is absolutely powerful. Grace is the divine influence, or another word for divine is the godly influence upon your heart, the supernatural influence upon your heart, and the acting out in the life that includes gratitude. So what grace is, gr grace is literally the force that will impact your belief system or your heart so much that it will bring forth actions in your life. You know, fear is also a type of force that we can um, compare to grace. Fear is a supernatural influence that's inside your heart that brings forth actions that includes emotions of fear, that includes emotions. So, um, or it includes you being scared of certain things. Now, grace is what God has done to influence your belief system to a place where you see a change in your life. So many times we want to change things in our lives and we think, well, I must just try harder. I must just um, be more dedicated or... You've got your system or your rules that you've got which you think you need to obey in order for grace to manifest in your life or for a change to come into your life. But the Word of God says, For God so loved the world that He gave His Son so that whosoever believes on Him might be saved. And that word saved is to be changed. To be changed in your life, to be changed in your mind, to be changed in every area of your life. And that's through Jesus Christ. Through the giving of His Son. So if we can see how He gave His Son, our hearts will be influenced. And if our hearts can be influenced by something that God has done, to the point that we see a change, that's called grace. Never think that grace is just this um, 
message that's actually powerless, that cannot bring forth a change in your life. Grace is the very power of God that influences your belief system so much that you will experience a change in your life and you will even find gratitude in your heart. It's the divine influence upon your heart. So when we preach the gospel, it must bring forth grace. When we preach a message, it, it must bring forth grace. When you read your Bible, it must have such an influence upon your belief system that you find a change in your life. That you don't try to change, but that a change is the result of what you've heard about God. I just spoke to somebody over the phone and they listened to my series on finances where I just connect grace to finances and the power of the cross to finances. And they said, you know, I've not only been set free from a legalistic way of thinking concerning how God can bless me, but I've been set free in so many other areas as well where I never could relate to God as a father. All of a sudden I can relate to Him as a father because He cares for me because I am his child. So what happened to her is she listened to a message that divinely influenced her life and then she said, you know what, I've, I just found that I'm free. I've been delivered from things that I never thought I could be delivered of. That I didn't even know that I was really bound in certain areas, but I'm free. So if we listen to something, it can be a message on finances, it can be a message on the love of God, it can be a message on the cross, it can be a message on mercy, it must be something that will influence your belief system so much that you will find a change in life. Not something that comes into your heart that brings an obligation and a, um, a commandment that says, now you must change your life. No, it is something that produces a change in your life and adds gratitude towards it. Now, you know, when I believe that um, when Strong's gave this Greek definition of the word grace, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's the most powerful definition I've ever heard on grace. It's the divine influence in the heart, the acting out in the life that includes gratitude. Gratitude speaking of, it is something that I am happy about, or, or um, I've got gratitude towards someone or something because of what happened in my life. Now gratitude is when you receive something or it's an emotion that comes into your heart when you receive something for free. Or when something good is done towards you. So when we look at the Bible and we look at our situation in life, what's going to bring forth a change is when we see what God has freely done for us in Jesus Christ. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4 and we're just going to have a look at grace and the heart of man. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. So what, is, uh, what, what does the writer say to us? He says, My son, incline your ear unto my words, keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. And then it says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart or out of it are the issues or the forces that drives your life. Put away from you a fraud mouth and perverse lips, put it far from you. So what does he say here? He says so clearly that listen to what I've got to say, put it in your belief system. And then you guard that way of believing with everything in you, because out of your heart, flows the very force that drives your life. Maybe you are a person that's watching today and you've been thinking, man, I need a breakthrough in my marriage. I need a breakthrough in my relationship with people. I need a breakthrough in my finances. I need a breakthrough in healing or deliverance. And I, I just struggle so much. I don't know how am I ever going to be delivered or how am I ever going to change. The outflow of power that's going to release you from the bondage you're in, is in your heart. It is not going to come from some source outside. It's not, not going to come from some person that helps you. It's going to come from your heart. 
Because out of the heart flows the very force that drives your life. So where you are now has been, you've been driven. I don't care if it was because of situations or whatever, but the root and the bottom of this thing is your heart. The way you feel today is as a result of your heart. The, if you struggle with depression, the depression that you feel in your life is an outflow of your heart. Now, my definition of the heart is the belief system. Because the Bible says, with the heart we believe. Now, your heart is not your spirit. Your heart is the, your belief machine, or your framework of mind when it comes to faith, how you believe, or your subconscious mind. So if your subconscious mind has been programmed with, I am poor, we're going to struggle, I'm never going to be a success, it's hard to work before you're going to get anything. If you've got a belief system that says, I must work hard before God, God is going to give me anything, or hard work brings success, and only hard work brings success, you know what? You'll have to work hard before you'll see any success. Even if it goes well with you, you will not count all the good that happens to you uh, before you think that you've worked hard enough. So your eyes will be closed to every blessing that comes outside of hard work because your belief system says, through hard work I will have. Now, the definition of grace is the divine influence upon your heart. The divine influence upon your belief system. Now, let's use another example. The Word of God says that uh, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and hard, wor hard work adds nothing unto it. Now, imagine your belief system can be full of that. You will start to see more good things in your life. You'll be a more positive person. Maybe you are depressed. You can be somebody that suffers from depression because of a simple thing like believing through hard work you're going to be blessed and you've you can be so bound by that that you can you don't know where the end of your hard work is and you never see anything good in your life therefore you say well nothing good's happening to me you are blind to the good that's in your life because of a simple wrong belief system because you have not taken the word of the word of God that produces grace and influence to what is good in your life. Now, the only way we're going to be set free from defeat in our life, the only way we're going to be set free, and I'm not talking about spiritually being set free, I'm talking about manifestation now. The only way we're going to see the manifestation of deliverance in our life, the only way we're going to see the manifestation of being set free from fear in our life, is by knowing a word that can produce grace. If we don't know a word that can produce grace, we will not have that deliverance. Because true deliverance, deliverance from fear, only comes by the finished work of Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says that perfect love has cast out all fear, or casts out all fear. Perfect love. And if we still fear, we have not been perfected by the love of God. In other words, the love of God, if you read... Um, Verse, yeah, from verse 7, 8, 9, and 10 in 1 John chapter 4, it says, The love of God is living through Christ, and not living through your own efforts, and living through your own laws. So, the only way man can be delivered is by having a, rela a revelation, and a re relationship with God, on the basis of grace. On the basis of living through Christ, and not living through our own works. The more you think you must live through your own works, the harder you will find it to be delivered from things in your life. You will have a struggle as long as what you are walking by your own efforts and not by the divine influence upon your heart. Now God wants to influence you divinely and His whole gospel is about His influence in you. Now the more you open your heart to the cross, the more you can connect every area of your life to the cross and the resurrection and the obedience of Jesus Christ, the more you'll experience this grace. Grace comes through what Jesus Christ brought us. We can just open the Bible quickly in John chapter 1 and just read that. It is so powerful to, to see how Jesus Christ brought grace. John chapter 1, let's read from verse 16. And of His fullness have we received, and grace 
for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, has declared or explained Him. So, Jesus came and brought such a revelation of who the Father was, that it impacts a person so much that, they will have, that a person will have a change of life. He will become a merciful person. He will become a person full of forgiveness. He will become a person delivered from the bondage of things because of the revelation that Jesus brought of who the Father was. And that is grace and truth. When we saw grace, when we can see grace, or let me put it this way, when we can be influenced by God through having such a good revelation of how good God is, that is the true deliverance that God has planned for you. By grace. Amen. Now, grace came by Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to Second Peter and we look at what he wrote down concerning the multiplication of grace. Because God wants more than just you being, in, being influenced once. When you got saved, you heard a message that was so good that you said, man, it influenced me to have faith that God wants to and has brought salvation unto me. You placed your heart in that and you were saved. As easy as that. Now, if we go to Second Peter chapter 1, we're just going to read there from verse uh, 2. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Let's read it again. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, which is our Savior. Amen. So grace will be multiplied to you. God's divine influence in your life that will influence you to be a good husband, that will influence you to be a good son to your parents, that will influence you to be a child that walks in victory in his school in the midst of drugs and all types of sin that there is. The influence that will come will come through the knowledge of God through knowing what God knows about you. Now, if you think that God knows that you're just a sinner, that God knows that you are not um, in freedom, that God knows that you are in bondage, that God doesn't like you, that God's just conscious of your sins, let me tell you, that's not the knowledge of God. That's the knowledge that comes to man through being under the law. The knowledge of God about you is absolutely found in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We must realize, and we're going to look at that in, in uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 19, that God's reality about you is Jesus. What God knows about your sin is all settled in Jesus. What God knows about your obedience is all settled in Jesus. What God knows about your righteousness is all settled in Jesus. What God knows about your relationship with Him is all settled in Jesus. So, God's knowledge about you is in the man, Jesus Christ. So what we must do is have the knowledge of God and know what God knows about us. This is what it says. Let me say it again. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. That word knowledge is the Greek word acknowledgement. So grace and peace will be multiplied in our lives, through the acknowledgement of God, what God acknowledges about you, and what you must acknowledge about what God knows about you. Man, isn't that awesome? That is so powerful. It's life-changing. It's life-giving. If you want peace to be multiplied, to become more, to be multiplied, and what I mean by multiply is, when it comes to spiritual salvation, going to heaven and being saved, we've maybe applied grace and we experience peace but now it can be multiplied towards our relationship with our wife it can be multiplied towards my finances it can be multiplied towards healing in my physical body it can be multiplied towards maybe you're an old person you don't know who's going to care for you and who's going to love you um, when you become sick maybe that's your thought pattern you can take grace and can be multiplied to that area where you can know man god can give you life in your physical body, and you don't have to be sick. You, you've received healing and health. And that through that, you'll become a person that is lovable by people. 
Because you will not be grudging, you will not be uh, all the time moaning and complaining, but you will find life coming into you. Not, and I don't want to say this, if you're an old person and you feel pain in your body, I've got compassion for you, you know. I know it must be hard, it must be difficult, if you cannot walk, you need people to help you all the time, man. I will tell you, God's got so much grace. He's got so much love for you. He loves you. I just feel that compassion in my heart right now. He blesses you. And at the end of the service, I'm going to, or service, at the end of this um, session, I'm going to just pray for you and believe for, with you for healing and help in your body. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord according as His divine power is given unto all things that pertains to life and godliness through the acknowledgement of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. So there is divine power for us, there's change for us through knowing what God knows about us. If you are addicted to drugs, if you are homosexual, you, man, you are not experiencing the kingdom of God. You are not experiencing righteousness, peace and joy. You feel rejection by people all the time. You don't know how to live. You've always got this mind that is just so full of fear and anxiety, not knowing where to go. You always feel um, condemnation and judgment from God. Always trying to find fault with Christians and all of that because of the very sin in your own life. Let, I've got good news for you. God loves you so much that He was willing to take the punishment for that sin, the judgment for that sin, the condemnation for that sin upon His body. He became a human being, came under the bondage of all of those things upon the cross. It had its time of bondage, the bondage of heroin, the bondage of homosexuality and all of those things has been upon the body of Jesus and He carried the curse for that in Jesus Christ so that you can know that God is not condemning you right now. All the condemnation has been, been in Jesus and this I want to add to that. He loves you so much that He's brought you freedom. You can be set free. You are set free right now. He loves you. You can come to Him and it can fall off you like, man, like taking a jacket and just getting undressed. Taking it off. That's how all of that great bondage sins that people seem to never get free from can just fall off you because of grace. And if you don't feel that right now, I want to encourage you to stay in the word of how much God loves you, to stay in the word of how much He cares for you, until you feel that falling off uh, your life and you experience that freedom. Whenever you commit a sin, say these words, I am forgiven. And I want to know more of God's mercy. I want to know more of His love. Because the more you know His mercy, the more you know His love, His mercy and His love being His influence upon your life, the more you will see freedom. In the next session, we're going to continue with the divine influence upon the heart, helping people to get victory over areas of their life where they struggle. But now's the time to pray for the sick. If you've got sickness in your body, you know the Bible says in the book of Acts that the apostles moved with great power because they've had great grace. There was a great influence upon their heart about how God healed the sick, how God um, cared for those who, who are in bondage with concerning sickness. There was a great influence through the word and therefore they had great power. There was a great manifestation in their physical life. I want to say this, if you've got sickness in your body, apply grace. How do you apply grace? By looking at the mercy of God. How did God influence your life concerning health and concerning wealth and all of those things? He influenced it by taking your sickness upon the cross and sickness had its heyday in the body of Jesus. And that was also the very day when it was defeated because when it was in the body of Jesus, it had its full work. And then when all sickness had its full work, um, absolute unto death, Jesus Christ gave His life over and died willingly the death that you were supposed to die because of your sin and because of sickness and because of all those things. 
That's what he did. So that he could be resurrected in a physical body. And that was his influence in your life. He stood up out of the grave, a completely healed man. And now we can use the name of Jesus to speak healing to you. And that's what we're going to do right now. If you've got sickness in your body, my friend, I want you to lay your hand where your sickness is or send a, a prayer request that we can pray for you right now that you can receive your healing now. But the best is to stretch forth your hand now and receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, I speak the healing power of God to every person that is watching me right now. I say you are healed, you are delivered, and you are set free. Receive your healing. God heals you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man, thank you that you've listened. If you want to make use of our ministry products, the number's on the screen.